all of us we experience pain <laughs> but is pain real or just a perception common sense suggests it is real because if someone is sleeping and you go and prick with a pin suddenly he'll get up and for sure that pain is real for him but what scientists are saying now is intriguing it's something very interesting they're saying pain is not entirely real there is a large component of pain which is perception let's understand this with few examples what they have seen many of the research on war and on soldiers when they are fighting war they forget about the pain and sometimes even when they are hit with a bullet or even they have lost a limb they do not get the pain as if it has been anesthetized another very interesting case which is kind of an opposite in 1995 it was reported in the british medical journal where a builder who was having a construction site he stepped on a nail which is fairly long it was 15 cm nail and it penetrated through his boot and pierced into his foot it was such an excruciating pain that he could not move he was taken to the hospital and even the doctors could not touch the nail because little movement was causing a lot of pain in his foot so they sedated him and then they removed the nail but what they found was absolutely amazing and astonishing the nail has even not scratched the surface or or the skin of this person it had just passed through the boot and passed through the gap between two toes so he was absolutely unhurt not even a scratch was there on his skin but he was having a terrible terrible experience of pain as if it was real now the question comes was he lying for any reason maybe possible but later on many other research suggest no for example research on phantom limb phantom limb is a very unique kind of a syndrome wherein some people who have for some reason lost their limb either it has been amputated or because of some accident it has been lost but still they continue to get a pain in the limb which is not there that means somebody's hand has been amputated and let's say right hand amputated but still the person feels some kind of pain in his fingers or palm of the right hand how to treat the pain so it was believed probably it is something like a psychological disorder but modern science found out that this is actually physiological pain experience when they conducted research they found actually in the brain in those areas where pain is perceived and felt are very much active as if the pain is there in that part of the body which is though it is not there but the pain is there in the brain of that part if you want to know more about how the brain captures the body sensation and maps different parts of the body onto the brain please watch the video which has created on body and mind and how the brain affects the body and you'll find the link of that video in the description neuroscientists they term it as a neuromatrix that means the entire body is mapped onto the brain for sensing and also for giving commands for motor movement of the body so research on phantom limb syndrome has given us a lot of insight that a vast part of the pain that we experience is actually not real it is perceptual or it is because of the state of the mind or how the mind operates to perceive pain this suggests that people who have better control and better command on their mind would have a better ability to manage their pain and get less suffering on account of pain in order to take this further scientists also try to work and do research on people who have got better control and command on their mind who are they they are the meditators and there were number of studies which were done on meditators to find out is it that pain affects the meditator less because they do meditation they go through the process called the mindfulness practice does it actually reduce pain and there are many such experiments which have been done in the past so many years 
scientists actually differentiated the pain experience to two distinct parts. One is because of the sensation or they call it sensory causation. The other part which we discussed now is about the mind state causation. That means because of the mind state, I have a pain perception. So they distinguished this two and they designed experiments to find out what is the impact of pain on meditators and they conducted experiments. Two groups, one with meditators and one who are normal people. The experiments are usually designed so that they give some kind of pain stimulus either with a light which is heating the skin or with water which is hot and they would measure what is happening in their stress level and in their suffering on account of the pain and they distinguish the mind aspect to two different parts one is anticipatory that means before even the pain is inflicted you can very well appreciate when we go for an injection before even the needle is pushed we feel some kind of stress and some discomfort and at the time the needle is entering we are getting the pain and after that also we get the pain some kind of thought and emotion about the pain that was inflicted during the injection syringe that was pushed into the flesh so these are three parts anticipatory during the pain and after the pain so in most of these experiments they designed it like that before they actually give the stimulus of pain whether it is a light or hot water they would give a kind of signal that in next 15 to 30 seconds you are likely to get the pain and then that stimulus will remain for about 10 to 15 seconds and then it will be withdrawn after that also they will measure to what extent this stress is remaining this painful experience is continuing they found something astonishing mostly the meditators are either getting the same kind of experience of pain during the infliction of the pain during the stimulus which is inflicted on the body that is the sensory causation part there were not much difference in fact in some cases they found the meditators had a higher degree of sensory causation that means they experienced it more intensely compared to those who are non-meditators. But what they found different was anticipatory. As the signal is given that in some time the stimulus of pain would be there, non-meditators had more stress. They also experienced some kind of a pain before the stimulus came. And after that, also they had a more lingering and intense experience of stress and some kind of more pain in their pain receptive areas or pain perceiving areas in the brain for a very long period of time compared to the meditators. So meditators had fairly a flat graph, then they had a spike when the actual pain was given to them and then suddenly they come back to the normal level. Whereas non-meditators they had stress right from the time the signal is given that pain is likely to come in the next 15 seconds and it continued increasing. Spike was there at the time of pain, but it continued further for a very long time compared to the meditators. So what they suggested that perceptual aspects of the pain is more in non-meditators, whereas the actual causation due to senses or the sensory causation was same or sometime for meditators more because meditators they are in the present moment and they get an intense absorption of their environment but this finding that sensory causation in the meditators is the same as other normal people or sometimes it is even more than the normal people doesn't hold good with our experiences because many times meditators manage pain much better we can take an extreme, extreme example. In 1963, one Vietnamese Buddhist monk, Thich Quang Duc, he expressed his protest and he noticed, he sent a notice to the government that as a mark of protest against the subjugation and extreme atrocities on the Buddhist community, he would sacrifice his life through a process of self-emulation. And as per that plan, he came to the 
came to a street which was near the presidential palace in Vietnam and he sat in a lotus posture some of his colleagues they poured petrol onto him and they lit fire and thick quang duk burnt in few minutes this was seen this was been observed by hundreds of people one of the persons who observed this from that crowd was david halberstam a famous new york times reporter what he writes is i was too shocked to cry too confused to take notes or ask questions too bewildered to even think as he burnt he never moved a muscle never uttered a sound his outward composure in sharp contrast to the wailing people around him this is absolutely unthinkable a person burning and not a single muscle even moved so this is what is very intriguing how someone could manage that extreme pain but an experiment by a scientist christopher d charms explains what exactly happens here he created a system which could present the brain activity of pain areas projected onto a screen in the form of a flame now christopher d charms asked these people to look at that particular picture of that flame and try change their mind state so that the flame size gets smaller and smaller and with this try and effort those people could limit their pain what this found out is when people saw their pain as an object outside they could intervene so they kind of dissociated the pain as an experience from themselves this state of awareness also known as meta awareness or meta attention when we can observe that thing as a separate aspect can help manage pain better this is kind of a dissociative state a detached state wherein we see ourselves different from the pain experience exactly that's what happens also in meditative practices not just they are going for meditation they separate out the experience from themselves in case of thick quang duk the same thing might have happened where he dissociated the pain experience from himself from his consciousness so this dissociation is one of the primary mechanism of many of the modern pain management processes including mbsr meaning mindfulness based stress reduction therapy and this has been working extremely effectively to help people manage pain for a similar kind of reason people who are fighting in the war soldiers or pilots they also get less affected by the pain itself because of a strong association with the larger goal and larger community and that spirit that they do have for that community they associate themselves much deeper into that rather than to their physical body so in a way that dissociation happens from the body because of a stronger association with a goal or with a mission so broadly when we see look at the pain whether it is real or perceptual it is both both of these we can handle better with a strong goal in our life with the ability to dissociate and with the ability to become mindful about ourselves if you love the content of this video please do consider subscribing and also please share in the comment in your pain experiences what have you done in the past which has helped you overcome the challenges of pain and reduce the sufferings on account of pain one more aspect which is very important with regard to pain management is neuroplasticity in some cases where there are chronic disorder by application of the mind people can change the structure of the brain and change the experience of the pain if you want to know more on neuroplasticity please do watch out this video which will give you astonishing idea about how neuroplasticity can change the quality of our life